Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, the Michael Myers collection room is pretty messy as usual. It's not really the Myers collection room anymore. It's where I do, well, it's where I put all my boxes for um, mask shipping and keep a lot of supplies in here. So this video is about the Captain Kirk conversion project. But over here we have a TOTS 78 and obviously I've removed all the hair and I've repainted it with a, a nice matte white and I had to do a little repair job on his mouth because uh, one side was sealed and the other side here had a big gap so I had to fix that, it's quite seamless so I'll glue some hair on him, do some weathering and I'll show you that on when it's done I intend to keep this one because it fits me really well it's a slightly smaller 78 than usual but I'll get back to you on that one but here we have the Trick or Treat Studios Captain Kirk mask, which obviously I know 99.9% .9 of you know already. But for those you know, small percentage that don't, this was um, you know how the original Michael Myers mask from 1978 started out. It was a Captain Kirk, and there's a video on YouTube on the Sean Clark channel where Tommy Lee Wallace himself recreates the original shape mask from. Not one of these because this is uh, like a replica or, or, you know, it's not, doesn't look quite as detailed as the original. I think it was Don Post Studios, was it? Uh, the original Captain Kirk mask from back in the day. Uh, around the eye area seemed to be a little bit more, a bit more definition on the, on the real ones. But I'm going to be cutting the eye holes out anyway, so it should be pretty good. Now what I was really surprised with was the quality of the hair. I don't know if it's mohair, but it's really soft and it's it's really good quality hair. Obviously, the hair uh, hairline needs fixing, and obviously, you know, things need to be done. But I think I'm actually going to be sticking with the hair that comes on the Captain Kirk mask. Now, I got this mask and that one from MadAboutHorror.co.uk. So, if you're interested in getting one of these, they recently came back into stock, so you can go on to Mad About Horror and get one. So. This is just some footage at the beginning of the video just to show you the mask completely stock. Uh, it fits me really well. It's a nice kind of snug fit. A little bit of room in there to breathe, but it's not too tight. It's definitely not loose, so it fits me well. So as long as the as long as the conversion goes to plan, this should be a really good 78 mask for me to be able to have in my collection that I can actually wear. And also this one, obviously with the kind of built-in Nick Castle stretch that slightly more elongated creepy look so that'll be my Nick Castle stretch mask and this will be just the regular you know, non-stretch version and I'll just give you a little look see the back of the hair here really is excellent hair on this very good quality it's interesting how the hair varies from Tots mask to Tots mask at least in my Myers mask experience like I really like the hair that comes on the Kills mask and the hair on the 2018 masks not as good but not too bad but this is probably the best hair I've seen so far on a Tots mask it's cool to have the, uh, the actual Shatner card here as well always pause that and have a read if you're interested in this sort of stuff All right, so now I've got the footage of the stock mask out of the way, I can get to work on this. But wish me luck. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at Dean Knight Free Free Free. And if you want to order a mask from me, uh, you can do so. Email me at d e a n k free 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 at hotmail dot co dot uk. You can d uh, dm me on Instagram at Dean Knight Free Free Free. All right, let's get started with the conversion. Alright, so I'm going to start by removing the eyebrows and you can see the kind of moulded eyebrow underneath that we recognise from the Michael Myers mask. And this hair is coming off really easy so far, I'm just literally just pulling it away gently with my fingers. Then I'll proceed to cut the eye holes. Alright, so that's one of the eyebrows removed. Still a couple of little straggly little hairs hanging around there, I'll get rid of those. 
just to show you one gone, one still there. Now I'm just thinking about the order I'm doing everything in, so obviously I'll remove the eyebrows first. Then I will probably cut the eye holes next. Then I will fix the sideburns. And then I will paint the mask white. And after I've done that, then I'll fix the hairline. Am I nervous about cutting the eye holes? Yes, I've never done it before. And if you get it wrong, you're screwed. There's not much you can do about it. So I will... <laughs> I've already looked at so many pictures, I went on michaelmyers.net and got every picture I could of the original mask. have to bear in mind, a lot of them are of Nick Castle wearing it, so you get the stretch, which is kind of distorting the natural look of the mask. So I am being very careful about what images I use as my reference. Does anyone need any eyebrows? Got some eyebrows now. There's me, Big Mac coveralls. And... Very much looking forward to bringing you guys some cool 78 Myers videos. Wearing these coveralls and this mask once it's done, and that one over there. Now, obviously, you're going to want to go around the eye cuts that you're about to do in pencil or pen. I tried pencil, but it just wouldn't really work. You know, I could barely see what I was drawing so I decided to use a pen instead and I've done it very lightly and I'm probably gonna think about it long and hard before I actually take a scissors to this I'm gonna go back and check and double check and redo this if I need to I just need to give myself some guidelines obviously you can see uh, just there is a little bit bumpy with the line so I can smooth that out before I I'm, you know I'm gonna really make sure I get this right before I take a scissors to it and I've checked, I can wipe this away quite easily and start again. But you will need to uh, outline what you're about to do before you do it. Alright, so I'm pretty happy now with how the shape of the eye cuts is going to be coming along. Now, there is a difference, obviously, between both sides. Um, this one's a little bit more straightforward. But this eye here has... Um, see, I can't really... You know, I've got to hold the mask and film at the same time, so I've got to use my thumb here to try and do everything <laughs> as far as pointing to things. Uh, but this corner in the uh, inner eye near his nose, this corner on this eye has a slightly different shape to this side. Now, obviously, keep in mind uh, the eyebrow. Use the eyebrow as a guide for you know where the you know where the line should stop, and also keep in mind that that little tick. That's sculpted into the corner of the eye. You want that to still be there to an extent. It's nerve-wracking, but I think once these are cut out, this will look pretty good. And if it's your first time, maybe, you know, it's better to have them be slightly smaller eye cuts than they should be, rather than being too big. If it's too big, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you do them too small, you could always use a Dremel to make them a little bit more bigger, uh, bigger and more accurate. So... Bear that in mind as well, folks. So the cutting part I'm not nervous about. It's just, you know, drawing the line of where the cut needs to be, getting that the right kind of shape. That's the bit I'm nervous about. So I'm still not going to rush into it. I'm going to sit back and take my time and look at some more pictures and just make sure things are looking pretty good here before I proceed. You only get one shot at this. Isn't that right, Captain? All right, so now I've peeled away the sideburns. I've still got obviously some hair to get rid of there. And on this side too, which is a bit more tricky, but what you really want to do now is take those sideburns and kind of glue them behind his ear. We, I can't really show you one-handed because I haven't got an assistant to film and uh, no tripod, so I can only sort of hold the mask in my hand and hold the camera with the other hand. So I'm just trying to describe things to you. So, yeah, you want to try and keep the sideburns intact once you remove them all right so I've removed the sideburns and kind of glued them behind the ears and as you can see I've got some mess to get rid of on the other side too so that's another little thing done not too sure what I'm going to use to get this stubborn hair off here but I'll think of something 
All right, so mucho time has passed since last I filmed ye. And I've done the eye cuts, but I, I, when I was cutting inside the lines that I did, I went slightly within the lines to allow for uh, corrections with Dremels and such. So there's my eye cuts. And I had to wait a few days for some stuff to come that removes glue from surfaces. When I pulled off the sideburns, it left behind quite a mess. Can't stress enough how much I love the hair on this Kirk mask. I'm definitely going to be doing one of these again. I'll do another one. And I'll do a few. But yeah, that's uh, that's the eye cuts done. There they are. And I am excited. I'm very excited. That's all the hard stuff done. Now it's just a matter of painting it white, fixing the hairline, and weathering it. So, one last look at the skin tone before I paint over this with white. I'm not going to be spraying it, I'm going to paint it with a brush. And again, I cut within the eye lines that I drew on to allow for some room for correction. But to be honest, I think these are pretty close. You've got that kind of straightforward shape over here and then that subtle little abrupt kind of turn here. You just keep your knickers on, all of you. Bear with me. There's enough length, extra length of hair at the back here where I can take some of that hair and use it to glue over this hairline. I don't really want to be pulling the hair forward like I did with the kills mask. That works for the kills mask, but for a 78, I don't quite want that look. So I'm going to take some of that hair, extra length at the back, and glue it on the hairline to make that look better. Let's just drop it on the floor. So yeah. I tried it on again now that I've cut the eye holes and it feels great. And I'm really excited now because the scary part is over and now it's all the fun stuff. Yeah, I was just messing with the hair a little bit before I paint the mask white. Just wanted to see a little bit of shape coming through. Obviously still a hell of a lot to do yet, but it is kind of cool to see him slowly appear. That's scary. All right, so I've just spent some time in the garage painting the mask white. Did quite a few layers of paint on the actual face, but went a bit lighter around the neck because you want that skin tone to show. But I'm gonna let this dry and see if I need to go over anything more with the white paint, but I think that's probably enough. And next will be, I think I'll do the hairline next and then I'll leave the weathering around the lips, the tip of the nose and all that inner eye action. I'll leave that until I've fixed the hair. Because I think once the hair is fixed, you can see the potential. But I just need to fix that hairline and man, you can see him, he's coming through big time. Some footage of the mask in the back garden, blowing around in the wind, drying the paint. Pretty windy, very cold and windy. All right, so it has been a minute, as they say on the streets. I had to kind of add my own sideburns lines. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they're perfect, to be honest. I think this one's pretty much okay. Uh, obviously, I'm using glue, copy decks glue, and just paint it on there. And then once it's dry, I'll paint over it in white. Uh, the hair, 
on the mask is still the same hair. I really love this hair. I'm quite tempted to order a few of these masks just to steal the hair from it. I know you probably think you just go on eBay and buy mohair, but I don't know. I never quite know what I'm doing with eBay mohair. It's the quantities that you get are always a bit odd. I don't know. Forget about it. But um, yeah, I just really like this hair. So I have got another Kirk mask coming. Uh, and I think I'm going to take the hair off the next Kirk mask and put it on my uh, 78 that I'm doing. But just giving you a little progress. You've got the flesh tone coming on the neck. Now I know there's supposed to be more flesh tone around here and other areas like the jawline. I'm not sure if I'm going to go and do all that. I like the idea of um, in the Tommy Wallace video when you know he just said it was white and he didn't weather it too much at all. He said the shadows did most of that. Now one thing, if you're thinking like I did for quite some time, I've been pondering on this for quite a few days, no matter how accurate I try to make the eye cuts, they always look too far apart. And that's because on the Kirk mask, if you look at the bridge of the nose on a Kirk mask, it kind of gets a bit, especially from the front, you've got a bridge of a nose up to about here, and then it gets very flat. And if you go and look at the, the 78 mask, it's totally different. I mean, the, the bridge of the nose starts here, like, you know, it comes out quite far. And that's the way it looks, the way it looks. But this one doesn't have that. But if I pinch um, this area right here just a little bit, I'm trying to do this without my hand being in the way, but there's just no way to do it. Uh, but you see, it, it's a very subtle change, but just that little, that little tiny pinch there. I wish there was a way I tried uh, different techniques inside this bridge of the nose to try and bring this in just a little bit, just to give him a bridge of a nose again. Uh, it looks great from the side. You can see it's there, but from the front, it has this kind of flat look and it makes it look like there's more space between the eyes than usual. But that's just the nature of a Kirk mask, so uh, just learning as I go, really. It's my first time doing one of these conversions. I've had a lot of fun, and I've got another one on the way. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. This one's sold already, folks, so someone got in touch and wanted to buy it. So that's going to a good chap in America. But... It fits me really well, and I really like it. So I'm getting another one, and I'm going to do some more work with these. But like I said, on the next one, I'm probably going to steal the hair from it and put it on my 78 up there. So we'll see. I should interject here as well. Like, obviously, when I was, um, you know, doing my reference pictures and making sure the eyes were cut right, you got to keep an eye on the eyebrow uh, beginning and end and keep... Keep the eye just inside the eyebrow, just inside, never overlapping these edges. So that's how I know I haven't got the eyes too far apart because I copied where they are to the eyebrow. It's just like I said, the nature of the Kirk mask has a bit of a, a flat area here. It's not flat, but it's certainly not as pronounced as the 78 mask with the Nick Castle stretch. But you can see the Tommy Lee Wallace closet scene kind of look that this has. You know, that classic scene where he's bursting through the wardrobe and the light bulb's banging off his head and he's uh, coming to get her and she stabs him in the neck. Obviously, there's no punch or wound in this one yet, which I like. This is uh, before all that happened. But yeah, just some interesting stuff about the eye holes and that situation. So now I've got to do... I'm debating how much more to do. I'm, I mean, I, I've already sold it. I want to keep it as um, as close to what Tommy Lee Wallace said in that Sean Clark video where he said, you know, at the conventions a lot of people do the shading and the shadows themselves, but it was just the light doing that. It was really just a, a white mask with obviously a bit of skin tone from where they're handling it all the time, taking it on and off here. Uh, did a little bit of weathering around the ear, but I'm debating how much more to do. Uh, the lips could maybe do a little bit more, maybe the inner corners of the eye, uh, but that won't take too long. But the next thing I'll do is paint over the sideburn glue thingy that I did in white to make it look more natural. Got to clean up this bit as well. It's very difficult when I removed the sideburns. Um, I had to go and buy some special stuff. I can't remember if I showed you that stuff. I better show you just in case. Yeah, so it's this stuff. And it removes glue. You have to put it on, leave it for a few minutes, then come back and scrub the hell out of it with a wet cloth or whatever. But yeah, I found it on eBay. And it kind of works, but also is not 
the most effective thing ever, but I've never done this before. I've never had to remove glue from a mask. But we're looking good here, man. For a first time try at converting a Kirk mask into a Myers mask, I think I've done pretty well so far. Side profile is really, really good on this. It all comes down to the hairstyling, really. I mean, I've just tried quickly just to give it some horns, just to bring it to life a little bit, and you can see it's it's getting there. So, yeah. I'll check back in with you soon. And I brought in the H40, my pride and joy. My personal copy, which I don't intend to sell. I spent a long time working on this one. I've been accused a couple of times of going onto the set of the 2018 film and stealing a mask, for Christ's sakes. Now, don't take kindly to it, neither. I ain't no thief. Just got mad passion. Determination like MJ, Cobe, Eminem, those types of guys. They're my kind of people. They just won't give up until their mission is accomplished. And this was my mission. I could literally just film it all day long. I just love looking at it. It's in my bedroom all the time. So that whenever I'm on my bed playing video games or watching movies or chilling out with the missus, we can both stare at this thing. It freaks her out, makes me happy. It all works out in the end. Balance. See? But it's absolutely incredible. I'll toot my own horn on this one, folks. It's just... something else. Alright. And this is going to be my personal copy of a Halloween Kills mask. This is... This is the equivalent of that, but kills. Um, I had, you know, I, I buy a lot of these kills masks to rehaul and sell, and I was waiting for the day when one would come with a really nice thick pull. And this is a really thick, it's going to last a long time, and the detail, the cracks were so deep, and it's just an absolutely perfect copy. So this would be my personal one. And I'm slowly working on it. I've been working on this one for, well, on and off, mostly off, for a good few weeks now. And when the mood strikes me again, I'm going to go back and do some more work on it. But this will be my personal copy of the Kills Mask. And it will be displayed alongside my H40. And someday, my 78. Alright, so I'll get a bit sidetracked here. Let's uh, get back to the mission at hand which is finishing off this Kirk conversion for well, my good buddy in America who bought it already bless him good customer he is he's had about six masks maybe this would be the sixth one he's had off me in not as many months you know he's very very keen oh man I told you I could film it all day clean as a whistle no mess, no fuss. Look at all the different tones, colours going on. Look at the lips. It's beautiful. It's terrifying. It's perfect. My wall of reference. No 78 pictures, though, on here. I need to sort that out. I've been focusing on kills and H40s mostly. But, yeah, got to get some 78 pictures. I've got plenty of pictures on my phone and plenty of pictures on my laptop. I've got a whole folder on my laptop with nothing but 78 reference pictures. That's what I've been using. I need to get them printed out, though. Yes, Ruby, what are you saying? <laughs> Kangaroo. Kangaroo. There she goes. Doing her impression of a kangaroo. Now, I've done the painting over the glue for the line where the sideburn was ripped off. And this one's done as well. I might need to give that one more coat of white paint because it still looks yellow. God damn it. Anyway, uh, you know that little trick? Well, like a lot of you might not know, but those of you that do know, um, a bit of black paint just around the eye cuts. Just a subtle bit of black paint has a nice effect and I've heard that's what they did so that's what I done did here that's what I done ooh it looks nice there's another kills uh, in the works for a customer still got a hell of a lot to do haven't done the details or the cracks or anything yet just a base coat 
so you got me brushes. Hey, you were uh, terrible. Yeah, we all got our own way of working, haven't we? As long as the results are uh, satisfactory. Right, folks, I'm finished. Although you never really finish with something like this, I I could keep weathering it. But like I said, I want to maintain that kind of just white, you know, bit of skin tone coming through all around the neckline. Uh, but not much else in the way of weathering, because like I said, I just want to stick to what Tommy what uh, Tommy Wallace said in that video on Sean Clark's channel. So I'll just do some worn footage for you, and then. Um, I've got to finish up this kills mask, which is also going to the same customer as this one, and then he gets two masks. So I hope he's happy with them. I think he'll be happy with this. It's really worked out good. First attempt, first time doing it. So you know, I'm sure there'll be a couple of people out there with something to say, but uh, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Well, drop a like on this video guys, help me out a bunch, share it with your Myers collecting buddies, let them know that I'm out here doing these masks, because I'm doing masks for people, get in touch with me, email d-e-a-n-k, free 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 at hotmail.co.uk, and get in touch, if you want a Captain Kirk, should be able to do it, I can do that, not a problem, uh, yeah, thank you for watching, it's probably going to be a long video, because I started filming this video like a week ago, and I've just been doing bits and pieces. I've been, obviously, if you know the channel, I've been doing reviews on figures a lot this week. So I've been trying to squeeze in this at the same time. Uh, but yeah, and I'm happy with the results. Pretty good. <laughs>